Good afternoon everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to my review of the PNSO Dinosaur Museum, Ron the Mosasaurus. I actually got this figure somewhere in 2021, but I just keep forgetting to review it. So let's take a quick look at the packaging. On the front, you've got a beautiful render of the giant marine lizard. On the side, there's really nothing special. The top and the bottom are the same thing. And on the back, you just got some cautions and product information. Of course, there's always a little booklet that's being included. And unlike the booklets or pamphlets that are included with the more recent PNSO models, there really isn't a whole lot to this one. So there's two renders, a lovely artwork, a skeletal reconstruction, and that's pretty much it. I do want to point this out. You can see that it says Mosasaurus is 15 meters long and weighs about 40 tons. In my opinion, that's way too heavy, even if we're using the now outdated 1 to 10 head to body ratio size estimate, which this model is based off of since they said Mosasaurus is 15 meters long and the size of the model's head compared to the rest of the body. For a 15 to 17 meter Mosasaurus, I think that 20 tons would be more appropriate. Oh, that 1 to 10 head to body ratio size estimate was proposed by Dave Russell in 1967. But a more recent study in 2014, as well as the discovery of a nearly complete prognathodon skeleton, actually suggests that mosasaur bodies were actually 7 to 8 times the length of their skull. So that puts mosasaurs at a considerably smaller 43 feet long and 8 tons. You also get this sizable stand to display the figure, and here is Ron the Mosasaurus in all of his glory. Even though the proportions are outdated, it's still fantastic. And if you guys couldn't already tell, this is one big Mosasaur figure. Let's bring out the flexible ruler. And you can see that he's well over a foot long, and that's not even taking the curve length into account. Taking a look at the head, it's undoubtedly that of a large Mosasaur. And there's also lips. Opening up the mouth, there's not a whole lot of detailing on the upper jaw, but there is the pterygoid teeth. And the forked tongue is included on the lower jaw. Going down the body, there's plenty of that snake scale detailing and lots of skin folds. Uh, plenty of musculature can also be seen which shows that this was a powerful animal. Then there's the long tail and the shark like tail flute which mosasaurs are known for. And there's also a surprising amount of detailing on the underbelly. And to be honest, I think PNSO kind of overdid it with the skin folds and the smudging. It overshadows the, the neat looking snake like scale detailing. Let me bring out Evan the Tylosaurus. See, not a whole lot of skin folds, and the snake scales are very apparent. But I'm not gonna judge PNSO too hard for this, since this is one of their earlier models. I absolutely adore the coloration. There's the beige underbelly, a black line going down the body, and two shades of grayish blue. There's one in the middle, and one on the very top, which has that beautiful gloss PNSO usually uses for their aquatic animals. This is also accurate to what we know about the coloration of these marine creatures. Large ones like mosasaurs are going to be dark on the top and light on the bottom in order to blend in with the ocean depths. This is how you do a good pose for a figure. It's not too static, but it's not too dynamic. Ron is either chasing after his prey or just peacefully cruising through the ancient oceans. You may have seen some people saying that recent runs of certain PNSO models have taken a dip in quality, and they are certainly correct. When I've watched other people's video reviews of Ron the Mosasaurus that were uploaded in 2019, you know, the year the figure was released, I've seen plenty of differences. For example, the black line is thinner, the gloss was actually all over the figure, the bluish colors were lighter, and the eye was more intricately painted. But as you can see, none of that is on here. The gloss is only exclusive to the dorsal color, the black line is thicker and doesn't look as natural. And the eye looks pretty goofy. They didn't even paint the whole thing. Time to start with our usual comparisons. Here is Evan the Tylosaurus, and even though Ron has a more appealing color scheme and is larger, I still do prefer the Tylosaurus model. And in the future, I'm hoping that PNSO makes a new Mosasaurus with the up-to-date size and proportions. And I think it's likely, given that they've updated their T-Rex and Triceratops. Next up for comparison, we have Jeff the Chronosaurus and Rayquena the Leviathan. 
You can also see how similar the color schemes of these three animals are. Here is the PNSO Large Vinyl Megalodon, and yeah, doesn't seem like these two are from the same company. That Megalodon looks too much like a movie monster. The smaller one looks more compatible with Ron. Let's bring in two Ichthyosaurs. Tuxin the Himalayasaurus, and Levi the Uranosaurus. I'll be reviewing this guy next. In front of us, we have Ron next to Paul the Dacosaurus and Zewile the Autobodentatus. Next up for comparison is the Dunkelosteus Helicoprian and Cretoxyrhina. In front of us, we have two other Mosasaurus models, the one by Collecte and the one by Favorico LTD. I have to say, PNSO's offering is my favorite Mosasaurus figure, with Collecte's being a close second. Of course, we cannot forget about the Collecte Zyphactinus and the Collecte Mini Zyphactinus. Well, that wraps up my review for the PNSO Mosasaurus. I do highly recommend you guys getting this. The paint job and detailing are wonderful, and it's one of the very few big Mosasaur figures that we have out there. Most of the time, we get small or medium sized Mosasaurs and really big Pliosaurs. So I'm going to give this guy a 9.5 out of 10. I just wish that the scale detailing was a bit more apparent. So if you guys enjoyed this, hit that like and subscribe button, and let me know in the comment section of what you think of this massive model.